Hi there everyone, um, welcome to um, another one of my tutorials. Um, today I'm just going to run you over briefly a couple of sets of photos that I'm going to take from Lightroom, bring together and um, put them together in Photoshop as um, multiple exposure photos when you come through to Photoshop. Um, I've had a play with some of these before, some of them less so, so we shall see what happens. Okay, the first two I'm going to, I've just chosen these principally just for the uh, purpose of this exercise. So I'm going to just select these two photos here to start with, um, right click and edit in, and I'm going to go all the way down to the bottom and open as layers in Photoshop. And these two photos should be brought through into Photoshop and appear any second now. She says, hopefully, here we go. Um, what I generally do is I try and work with the textured kind of photo on top of the photo that has the more contrasting lines um, in. So here you can see this is what I would call the texture photo and this is the one that has more lines in. Um, there's no great science to this. I just normally play and see what actually works for each individual set of photos and sometimes sets of photos just don't work and I have to ditch in. So, okay, those two are not going to work. But for the for the uh, example of this photo, this is what I'm going to do and show you. So, um, you make sure you've got the top one selected, and that's the one that you're going to start playing with. It's going to how it interacts with the photo below. And if you just run down these, you start to see the effect they can create. And this top section here is um, darkens. The next section down tends to lighten very slightly. The next section makes more subtle, certainly the first two make more subtle differences. You can still see both photos, but um, it's more subtle than the top. And then as you come down, you get some sort of crazy um, effects further down. I don't tend to use those very much. Overlay and soft light are kind of my go-to, but sometimes when I want to push the boundaries a little bit further, I might use one of these other ones. Um, I did have a play with this earlier, and I've forgotten which one I use now. I'm going to go with... There's very different, not a lot of difference between overlay and soft light here, but with soft light overlay, you can still see a lot of texture in the bark, and I quite like how the soft light, or actually I quite like the hard light because it almost looks like flames now. So for the purpose of this, I'm going to use choose hard light. Now you've got this, now you can start playing with the opacity and how strong this effect actually is. Make sure you've got the top layer selected. And normally what I do is I take it right back to nothing and then start bringing it in very gradually till I feel that it's about right. Then what I will do is I will push it just a bit further. So I've got 50% there. Then I'll push it a bit further and go, yeah, definitely not. And then what I'll do is just bring it back again and see if I come back from the opposite direction, whether I still get to around the same place. I got to 63, yeah. I'm gonna go with about 60% because coming from the opposite deck direction, I find now that 50 is a bit too flat and I want a little bit more zing in the image. So I'm going to go with around 62%. And that basically, for me, um, when I'm putting the two images on top, is as simple as I do. Um, I go to layer, oh, that's correct. I go to layer and say flatten image before I export or I save. And if you're working from Lightroom to Photoshop, you can just go to save and it will put the two, it will take what you've created straight back into Lightroom for you and it will put it with the two images. So here we are, this is your new image now. And then what I would do then is do the further playing. I then develop it a little bit further, like a lot of these type of images. I'm, I'm not liking this uh, sort of mess in the corner here. Um, so and I'm just going to have a play with a different crop. I quite like my 16 by 9 crops. And what I found when I'm doing my cropping, if I use a double L key, it makes everything around it go black, which means I can concentrate very clearly on the crop that I want. Um, I'm finding at the top there, those extra tree trunks are a bit distracting, so I'm just going to bring it down, lose those tree trunks, also lose that grey area in the top left, and gain the bottom of the tree trunks with a return and then an L you return back to um, the original picture and all the buttons on Lightroom. You can then of course play contrast, um, dehaze, lights, blacks, you know, it just depends on what you want to gain from this image. I quite like the, the 
quite like this, not too contrasty, um, because then it, it sort of all balances it through. And that's kind of very simply um, this first photo. And if you look at the originals, we can have a look at the originals and what created. So we had that photo and we had the grass photo. And we created this one. So you've got these two are the original photos. Again, if you go LL, you have these two original photos, and this is what I created from these two images, which is lovely because you in cap you sort of use both images to create something new, which is almost even better. Um, just going to have a little play here now with. Um, let's have a look. Quite like this, and I quite like this. So these two images here because I quite like the lines are sitting in different places in the images and they're quite strong, two sets of lines. So I'm just going to take that through, edit in, take it through to open as layers in Photoshop. Photoshop doesn't really like the line up and come through comfortably. Right. So again, we've got the two photos here. Doesn't matter. These ones have both got quite strong lines, so it doesn't matter which one sits on top this time. Um, again, I'm just going to run through these and have a look. And I quite like this straight away, very early on. Sometimes things just catch your eye very early on. I quite like that now both sets of uh, strong lines are quite balanced. If you're looking for something a bit more dynamic, you might want to start looking at maybe one of these other stronger ones. But for me, I quite liked, I'm going to go with the multiply in this situation. Again, I'm going to play with the opacity, take it right back, so you've lost those black ones. Take it too far, those lines become dominant now in the image, so I'm just going to pull it back a little bit so that those lines sort of balance and equal the same. And I love how you've got this brown shape at the top now. And for me, that's probably pretty good for here. Um, I don't do an awful lot in Photoshop. I tend to do most of it in Lightroom. So I'm now going to go and save. And again, it will bring it straight back into Lightroom. There's your third image up here. So I'll go into here now. Um, finding this a little bit distracting. So I'm just wondering whether a square crop on this one would be cool. So I'm just going to go and have a one by one here. Again, double click on the L button so that I can see what's going on. Still finding this area quite distracting, so unless I'm going to start cloning out. Uh, I quite like this because you've got the same distance here as you have here between these, and the same distance here and here. So that, for me, is a quite a nice balanced image, so I'm going to go with that. I'm just going to play with the blacks a tiny little bit. It's kind of my go-to thing, although I don't know whether that's what I want. Sometimes you have to just have a play and see. I'm quite looking at quite a soft image here. I quite like strong images, but sometimes I quite like a soft image. I quite like that. Let's play with contrast a little bit. Uh, bring back a bit of detail. And then, of course, you can always have a little play with the, the colour effects um, in this. You, know, you can turn it sort of a, a very cold, icy colour, or you can warm it up to make it very warm. I quite like the, that sort of, it almost feels a little bit snowy and a little bit icy. And I'm just going to clarify very slightly. I'm going to leave that there. So, if we want to look at those pictures there that we've just had it made from those. So one, two, three. Um, so here are your original two photos, and this is the end photo that you've created. So as you can see, I'm I'm very much sort of, I, I don't necessarily freewheel it, but I do let the images sort of do the talking and let me see what they want to be created into. Sometimes I have a specific idea before I go into Photoshop, um, and at other times I go in with absolutely no idea of what I'm going to come out with at the other end, um, and it's just a, a sort of playing game. As I mentioned, I don't do an awful lot in Photoshop except for bringing the two images together and then I come back into Lightroom and play with um, the contrast, the colours, the blacks, the whites, all that kind of thing. Sometimes I do a lot more on my images than others, 
Um, these ones were very simple, to be honest. Um, but yeah, you can spend an awful lot of time doing um, an awful lot of work on images if you want. So that was just a little run through of two sets of images coming together. I hope you enjoyed that and hopefully I'll be back to give you some more. Thanks for watching.